So I'm updating the space and where I do some 3D printing. And I just kind of want to pretty it up. So we need to make some sort of background and I'm going to use the 3D printer. What are the chances? Now I did do a test print of kind of like these hexes. and I really do like it, but I think we can do something a little bit better. So rather than those small hexes, I'm going to do a nice big one and they're going to be interlocking so that when we join it to the core flute, it's, it's just going to stick there and it's going to work. So I'm going to be using Blender. We're going to go through tips and tricks on how to use Blender for 3D modeling. I mean, you can use Tinkercad, so on and so forth. I know Blender. I'm going to stick with Blender. Let's use Blender. So the very first thing, I'm going to select all and I'm going to delete everything. What I like to do is add the size of my print base. So I'll do a shift A to add in a mesh. We're going to add in a plane because I know that this is two by two. I'm going to scale by 150. Now one blender unit is one millimeter. So when we do 300 millimeters, so if I press N to bring up the side menu, we could see that the dimensions of this square is 300 by 300. Size of my bed, I'm gonna be using the Creality CR10 Smart Pro, I think. That's gonna be my print. Um, setting, just finishing off the setup on this one, we click on the orange square, come down into viewport display and change display as to wire. So we've just kind of got that outline there. So we need to add in a hexagon. So shift A, uh, mesh, we're gonna add in a circle. Down here in the bottom left, I'm gonna change the amount of vertices or points. There we go, to six. Let's go scale 150. So that now, if I go into tab into, if I press tab and go into object mode, we can see that the dimension is 300 by 260, way too big. So maybe let's scale it by 0 0.8, 240, 0 0.8, 200 mil, I think looks pretty good. So we'll go with that. I want 10 mil border around. I think a 10 mil border should be pretty good. So let's go scale 1.1, silly Marco. Let's press E to extrude and then right click to put that back into place. I'm gonna go scale, so S to scale 1.1. And now that's given me a 10 millimeter border around the edge. So if we go tab into edit mode, we can see that the Y axis is 120. Let's make it fatter. Undo that, scale 1.2. There we go. So now we've got 20 mil around the outsides. Now, just for now, I'm gonna be worrying about the panel um, that's gonna be going on the wall but we also have to make an L joint down the bottom just to kind of help support that core flute. Uh, but we'll come back to that one probably at the end. I am gonna leave the central bit open and then we can put in individual um, hexagons, 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 whatever kind of like custom 3D prints in there. But for now, I just kind of want that border happening. To start off with, let's go back into edit mode, select all, E to extrude, and I'm gonna extrude two millimeters by pressing number two. And then I'm gonna go E to extrude and plus number three to extrude by three millimeters. So what I wanna create is kind of like notches under here so that when we come up to the point where we wanna insert something in there, um, we can, it's just gonna kind of like sit in those uh, side bits. So how are we gonna do that now? Is I'm just gonna use a cutter tool. So I'm gonna go shift A search and we're gonna go into a plane. Let's scale this by 10. So now we've got a 10 by 10 square. I'm actually gonna extrude it a little bit longer on the Y axis, on the X axis, sorry. And let's go G to the X and I'm gonna move it over to here. From here, let's go E to extrude two. And so now we've kind of got this little tab that we want to use. Now what I found really helpful for when I've been designing specifically for 3D printing is the bull tool. If we go into edit preferences, and in the search, say so add-ons on the left, sorry, and search, we type in bull. Just give that a little bit of a check mark. Now what I'm gonna do is select our little tab, shift left click our border, control and numpad minus. Now we've got a cutout under there. Now, if we were to actually come in, the top of this is actually going to be sitting on that line so we've kind of just covering ourselves a little bit um, for future on and just giving us a little bit nicer geometry. Now I'm gonna select our little tab back into edit mode. And what I wanna do is transfer this to all the other sides. Now, if I were to press rotate, 
oops, select all with A and rotate, you can see it's not rotating into the other points. So up the top here, hey, um, if you haven't already, just subscribe. We're going to change the pivot point to the 3D cursor, which is at the center of the world. If it's not at the center of the world, we can press Shift S, cursor to world origin. So let's now press tab into edit mode, Shift D to duplicate, press right click to put it back in its place, R to rotate 60. I'm just going to select all, Shift D, rotate 120 now, Shift D, rotate 120. There we go. And so now you can see how we've got these tabs on each corner, edge, side. So this is still our printing bed up the top here. This is the bounding box for our cutters. Now the next thing is, is how are we going to attach it to our wall? I'm thinking I might just screw it in. Uh, so we'll make a thread and a nut as well. But first we need to attach it in a hole somewhere. So I was thinking about this, I got a really good idea. So if we go Shift A, we're gonna add it in a cylinder. I'm gonna scale this by six. Now, just like we've done those tabs, I'm gonna move it all the way down to the bottom here. And these are, the center there is on that point. So now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna select, we're gonna select our piece here. Shift left click this piece, control numpad minus. And now we've kind of got this hole. From here, let's select our piece again. Shift D, rotate uh, 60. Select all, Shift D, rotate. 120, select, up. <laughs> shift D, rotate 120. So now, technically, when we put all these three pieces together, we're gonna have this central hole in the middle, and that's what's gonna be kind of um, putting us together, kind of clamping it together. Because all the sides are equal, we know that they should slide together and find of, uh, kind of find that balance, and then that screw will keep it in there. So I'm really happy with this piece. So when it comes time to um, creating the internal pieces, you know, maybe we might want to print stuff in different colors. This is something that, uh, yeah, will suit our needs. So just for now, I'm going to select our three pieces and I'm just going to move it off to the side and I want to create some bolts. So this is another free add-on, edit preferences. And if we type in bolt, we've got bolt factory. So put a plus sign there, a tick there. Shift A, mesh, and we've got bolt down the bottom. Now I can press the period key on the numpad and that's gonna zoom me in. So let's change this around. Head height is two millimeters. I'm gonna make this five millimeters high. Uh, the flat distance, I'm going to go 30. Thread length, let's go 25. It's all a little bit of out of proportion. The major diameter, I'm gonna make it 10 millimeters. The internal diameter, Let's make it seven millimeters. The pitch, let's make it three millimeters. So you can see that we've got kind of like a really nice thread on there. The crest percent, I'm gonna make 25%. So you can see how this bit here has been uh, made bigger. And then we need to increase the size on the internal one. So we'll do 25% there as well. Nice. And if we wanna make it a little bit more smoother, we can bump up the division count. So you can see, I think this is almost a Whitworth thread, not really, but this is kind of like the thread we're going for. Now you should be able to see that because we've made those holes there 12 millimeters, it's given us a, quite a bit of wiggle room. I mean, we could even bump this up to 11, your preference really. Now one last setting, I'm just gonna change the shank distance and that's this kind of like little piece right in here. So if I go shank to 20, you can see how we've got kind of like this little thing in there. So let's just kind of like rotate that around. GZ. If I hold control, I can snap it to our box, to our grid. There we go. Let's just move that off to the side. Now I want to add the nut. Let's go shift A mesh. We're going to add in a new bolt. But where the model is, we're going to change to a nut. You can see that it looks like complete rubbish, which is fine. We are going to change the flat distance. Let's go 30. Um, and we might just make it four mil thick, which is not too bad. Oh, I might as well make it five. Match the head with a major diameter. If we were to do this now, it's not really gonna fit too well. Um, just because 3D printing is obviously very inconsistent. We're not on a CNC lathe machining this down. So I actually am gonna give it a little bit of slop. 
So free changes to 11.5 and the minor diameter to, whoops, 7.5. We should be able to see now that if we were to grab this, uh, I think we're sitting in the right spot and kind of like line this up. You can see how much clearance there is. Now I'm just trying to see, just make sure it is there. Okay, I don't like the fact we can see that it seems to be like sitting on top of each other. That's no good. So actually I'm gonna delete that nut. Shift A, let's add in a bolt. It didn't change this 7.5 millimeters. There we go. This is at 11.5, just making sure that it's all good. Let's go G, put it back into place. Let's make sure that this mesh lines up to about there. There we go. We can see we've got plenty of space here, plenty of space here. So having half a mil clearance should be okay. Technically it's what, 0.2 of a mil either side. So we, we should be okay. I think it might still go on a little bit tight, but we'll be all right with that. So we've got our bolts, we've got our nuts, I'm going to move that one off to the side. So we pretty much have everything that we need to do to 3D print while we have our basis. Now I did talk about making a bit of a stand. So what I am going to do is I'm going to select these. I'm going to duplicate this by pressing Shift D to duplicate. And then I'm going to press Alt G just to reset the location. That's going to send everything back to the origin point. Now we, I'm going to select our tabs. Now we don't need these pieces. So I'm just press C to bring up that select tool. And now I'm going to press control L to select all the vertices linked. And I'm going to go delete vertices. From here, I need to kind of like bend this up. So I'm going to do control R to put a rotation, um, to put an edge loop in there. Control R, left click to put a rotation and then right click just to put it in the middle. Now I'm not going to do anything too fancy with this. So what I actually might do, just thinking, what would be the best way? If we go Z into wireframe mode, and I'm gonna select all these vertices, Shift D to duplicate, and then right click to put that back into place. I'm gonna press R to rotate on the X axis. I'm gonna go 90 degrees, let's go minus, so it's pointing up. And then from here, let's go ahead and select these, and we're gonna go delete vertices. All right. Now, because we did delete those vertices, there's a bit of a hole here. So if I were just to select this edge and then press FF, we've created a new face. Selecting this edge in here, FF, we've created some new faces. Let's do it on the other side. Because at the moment it's not a solid object. Now it is. Now this is obviously in two parts now. However, the slicer will combine them and it will be one piece when we go ahead and print it. Now if we go back into the photos, you'll see that we've kind of got this glass layer that the printers are sitting on. I think what I might do is just put that glass to be sitting on top of this and then that way it'll keep it stable. I mean, I can technically drill through the table to attach it, but I think we might just go with kind of like that solution there. But we've got our four things that we want printed. So let's go ahead and now export this into our, you know, um, slicing software. So the way we're gonna do it is I'm gonna select an object. So this is my nut. Let's go file, export. STL. Um, this one I'm going to call bolt and also I'm going to include selection only. So we've only selected the bolt. So when we cl click export STL, it's just going to export that bolt. Let's do the same for the nut. File export STL and I'm just going to call this nut. Okay. This piece here, uh, this is going to be our main frame. Let's go export STL. Apply modifiers is turned on by default so that's going to do let me just exit out of that if we come into our modifiers tab you'll see we've got two modifiers these are for the booleans and that's doing these cuts so let's select that file export stl and then this one is going to be main background or main hex sounds better and then this one here is going to be file export stl and this is going to be base hex export so let's now jump over into the Creality Slicer. I mean, we're like 13 minutes into this video, so clearly you're invested. If you want to see how it turns out completely, just hit the subscribe button. I mean. And so this has already all been set up. You can set up your own slicer how you want. Might do a video later on about setting it up itself, but I'm going to open up those files. Um, we might just 
main hex I can speak and then later on we'll print the nuts themselves so with that now I'm because I don't really care about the quality on this one I kind of just want to smash it out as fast as possible so my print speed is actually at about 130 millimeters a second. Wall speed, da 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 da. Like I've bumped up my settings. I know that this printer can hold heat, so I know it can melt the plastic fast. I'm not going to use any supports because I know the limits of my printer in terms of bridging. So I'm not gonna have any problems there. So if I click slice, we can see it's only gonna take, it's only gonna take an hour. Wow, that's nothing. Let's just print off some nuts and bolts then. Bolts, nuts, open. I'm gonna put that in the middle. Left click, click and drag. Left click, click and drag. Selecting both with control. Control C, control V, maybe not. If we look at the bottom of it, we can see our blue. The blue means it's touching the base. The nut is not touching the base, which is very interesting. So let's go have a quick squeeze. What's, what's the problem here, mate? It looks fine to me. Um, so let's go back into the slicer. And what I'm going to do is select this. And we are going to select, we're going to select the scaling over on the left hand side. And I want to lay flat. I want to select face that's going to align to the base. So if I click on this one, it is there. I've got a feeling the reason why it's being a pain is if I go into edit mode and I select this vertice, we can see that I'm only picking one, where if I were to pick the, like, the outer edge, you can see how I've got that orange line going out. So all these vertices in here, oh, there's a circle. That seems like a problem. <laughs> let's press F, that's yuck. Okay, let's zoom all the way out. Yeah, we can see that we've got some problems. I'm gonna press C and get rid of them. Come in, we can press F, to close that face. If I select the whole mesh, I can press M to merge by distance. And we can see we've removed 20 vertices. So now if I were to go file, export, STL, uh, make sure we change bolt, export. The file has been modified. Would you like to reload? Yes, which is an absolutely cool feature. Hey, Marco from the future here. Stopped recording. Cool. So why it wasn't aligned at the bottom I don't know, I still don't know why. However, when we click on pre, when we click on slice down the bottom here, we can see that when we go into preview and we come in, we can go on the right hand side and bring it all the way down and we can see the first layer. We can see that the first layer is gonna get printed. If we come down to the bottom here, we can actually follow the toolpath of how it's gonna go. So yeah, pretty easy. Once we're happy with it, in the bottom right hand corner, we can select upload to Creality Cloud. Now, because I'm using the CR10 Smart Pro, it's connected to the Creality Cloud system, I can see my print. So click on that, log in, upload, and um, I kind of want to show you this bit, but I'm already printing something. Because yeah, the printer has a webcam connected into it, so I can, but it's over there. That's cool. And so this is now just a quick time lapse of it, part of the Creative Cloud suite. This is the final results here, fairly happy with the size of it. Um, and you can see kind of from the blend file earlier that it was about the right size. So we're gonna have these hexagons all across this core flute over the back. And this is what it looks like with two of them lined up together. And you can see how there was a nice hole for those boot, the bolts to fit in.